spline image tool is very much like the previous two that we looked at the spline paint and the spline text tool in that it's going to apply a curve along the surface of an object and project that particular object along that curve whether it be a paint stroke text or in this case an image you may find that this tool is very similar to using a stamp which was previously called materials this will allow you to assign an image map in the color channel the depth channel and the specularity channel if all we have is a color image and we haven't yet created a grayscale version of it for bump or displacement 3d coat will use that color map and convert it to grayscale on the fly in this case this image has a transparent background so I'll just use this one in the depth channel and I hit OK and you'll see that it has a little purple dot here next to the green one indicating that this particular stamp has both color and depth information assigned to it and so you can move it about in 2D space and 3D Coat is going to camera project this as you can see here in the lower left hand corner of this preview options panel but you can assign cube mapping as well and once you start making adjustments with your little widgets you can see the, the changes or how it will be projected I'll switch back to camera and this will work great in many cases where you're working on a relatively flat or planar surface and Again, 3D Coat will camera project it just fine, but in some cases you may have an object that has an irregular surface or a lot of curvature or major contours, and in such a case you may find camera projection to introduce too much distortion, and that's where spline image might be a better option for you. So let's move on over to the tool options panel, and just like we did with the stamps, we can assign a color map to the color channel and one to the depth channel. And this will basically allow us to apply these three maps simultaneously rather than having to do it in three different steps like you would in a, another application. So let's left mouse click to create our first point, then our second. And if I want with two points like this, I can use one end as an anchor, as you can see here rotate it or I could use my widgets here either one but once you create an intermediate point you can introduce a little bit of curvature if you want and maybe if you don't have it lined up the way you want you want to make sure it's perfectly linear again you can choose two lines just as you could with the spline paint and the spline text tool you can also use the width modulation to adjust the width of your image. Let's bring that back to one. The extrusion simply allows you to apply a certain degree of inward or outward extrusion during this process. I'll just leave it at one. You also have a slider here that allows you to adjust fall off in a linear fashion. You can add tiling to it if you so choose along the spline. But what I really want to point out is how well 3D Coat wraps this image along a contoured surface. This still is projecting, but it's projecting from the spline as opposed to the camera. So I'll hit Escape. I'll hide this other logo layer. With this blank one, I'll just create one here as well. I'm going to hide these other objects. This object is double-sided. In other words, it's a shell. So, if I leave ignore back faces unchecked, 3D Coat is going to project this on the front side and also on the back side, and that may not be what I want. So. I'm going to make sure I check ignore back faces here. Let me create an intermediate point. 
point so it wraps a little bit better. And this will work in a 2D texture editor as well, just as the others did. Okay, and when I'm ready, I'm going to just hit enter. I'll get escape to drop this spline. It works pretty well. And as you can see with the ignore back faces unchecked, it did not apply it to the opposite side. And you can create a closed curve. You have the same options that we looked at in the previous two tools. You can save this spline as well as the image and reload it later on if you like. And you can also use your image just as we did with the other two tools as well. You can use different modes. You can use the image to erase, freeze, make planar, set absolute height. Okay, so that's going to conclude this look at the spline image tool. Hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.